Hello everyone and welcome to the Adam Sharp channel. In this video, I'm going to show you something very interesting, which is platform widgets. Now, if you have been working with Flutter, you know that you can always use the Material app and Scaffold to create the basic structure of your application. But whenever you say or use Material app or Scaffold, you're basically creating an app from a material perspective, meaning more of an Android version of the app. So if your customers or your clients want a very specific look and feel for an iOS app as compared to a different look and feel for an Android app, maybe the material app is not really going to work. So this app is running and it looks kind of like this, which is fine actually on both the platforms, right? But how can we make them different? Maybe we want to add a slider control. Maybe we want to add something very specific look and feel for iOS and very specific look and feel for Android. Well, the good news is that you can use something called the platform widgets. The platform widgets package is going to allow you to customize the appearance of the page based on the actual platform. You can see over here on the top, this one is the Android. And the same one, when it actually gets displayed on iOS, it is more suited for an iOS device. And you can see there are so many different kind of widgets that are available, which will work for platform widget, platform switch, slider, text field, button, and so on. So let's go ahead and start using the platform widget so that we can customize the appearance different for iOS versus for the Android. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and install it. So let's go ahead and install this. I'm going to go to pub spec and right after the Cupertino icons, I can go ahead and save it. Now I am running all of this stuff in the terminal. You can see that I use the flutter run hyphen d all command. So I'm running both the simulators and emulators together so I can see the changes. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into our main or dart file. This will be our starting point. And right now you can see that in the build function for our app widget, we are using the material app, which is basically for Android devices or Android look and feel or material look and feel. So let's go ahead and replace this with something called a platform app. So I'm gonna go ahead and say platform app, perfect. Now in the platform app, you can actually provide, if you want to, uh, different platform things that you want to pass for iOS as well as Android. We're not really going to pass in anything right now. We're simply going to say that the home page is our home page. Now let's go ahead and add this. There we go. And you can see that in the home page, we don't really have anything. So maybe we should get started with creating a stateless widget, which can be a home page. Make sure that we add the package library. Now in this case, I'm just gonna add material for now. And later on, I'll change that if I want to. I just want it to build at this particular moment. So I'm just writing as little code as I can to make sure that it builds. There we go. So now we have the home page, but the home page doesn't really do anything. It doesn't really have anything in there. There we go. Now, usually in the home page, you return a scaffold. Once again, when you're using scaffold, it is going to use the default scaffolding, which is for Android devices. But you can also go ahead and say platform scaffold. Platform scaffold basically means that it is going to be using platform dependent scaffolding. And now I can provide different things. What I want to do is I want to change the app bar. So let's go ahead and change the app bar. Well, the good news is that you can actually change the app bar if you want, dependent on the device using the platform app bar. And in the platform app bar, you can actually pass in that, okay, this is the app bar that I want to use for the iOS. So it will be a Cupertino 
navigation bar data and that bar data can contain, can consist of some sort of a title. Obviously we need some sort of a title and I'm just gonna say for iOS, it's gonna be iOS and style. We should, we have the text style and we can go ahead and say color, colors dot white. Now this is, we are providing some little bit more additional customization right now. If we don't use iOS and Android, then the platform app bar will simply appear correctly on iOS and on Android. But over here, we're customizing it a little bit more. And for the background color for the app bar, we can say that for iOS, we will use the blue color. Perfect. What about Android? So now we can actually jump onto Android and we can customize it if we want to. So let's go ahead and say material app bar data. And now we can customize it just for the Android device. So we will go over here and we will say the background color, which will be colors.purple and title, which can be text. And I can simply say Android for now, right? Now I can jump onto terminal, press the R button to reset. All right, let's do a hard reset most probably. So let's do a shift R so that it will reset, hot reset on both the things. It is actually failing it over here for page scaffolding that we haven't really provided the body yet. So we might have to jump there and provide the body. As you can see over here in the page scaffold, child is shouldn't be null. So we still have to provide the body for our iOS device. So in the platform scaffold, you can see that we don't really have any child. We don't have any body. So let's go ahead and provide something over here and say body. And for now, I'm just gonna say text widget. Just gonna say platform. Let's go ahead and save it. And there we go. So because we use the app bar and platform app bar for iOS as well as Android, we were able to completely customize the color. This is purple on Android, and you can see that this is blue on iOS. Now, if I do want to even customize a little bit even more, let's say that I want to use a, some sort of a slider, then I can also do that. So let me go ahead and replace this with some sort of a container and the container will have a child. Now, if I go ahead and simply use a slider, you will see that it appears in a different way. So on change, we're gonna get the value from the slider. I think we also have to provide the value for the slider. So I guess let's actually first double check it. Value, and I'll say 0 0.5 because the slider can go from zero to one. So 0 0.5 means it's gonna be right in the middle and we have a slider. Now, do you see something weird about the slider? Well, first of all, it doesn't move, that's fine. Nobody cares about that right now, but it looks exactly the same on Android and exactly the same on iOS, but this is not the iOS slider. This is the Android slider displayed in an iOS device. So how can we change that? Now, for most of the apps, or well, actually depends on the apps, but if your client is happy with this look and feel, then perfectly fine. You actually have less work to do. But if they're saying that, okay, the slider looks kind of weird, then you can change this to a platform slider. And now this will be a platform specific slider. You can see now on iOS, it's a very different slider. And on Android is actually very different slider. Now the question you might be asking that, Okay, hold on, so should I always be doing this? Should I always go ahead and use platform specific uh, controls? The answer is no, it really depends on the scenario. If your client wants you to make a more native look and feel based on the devices, then maybe it will be a good practice for you to use the platform specific controls to give them a more natural feeling for the app. But if you are just working and the client doesn't really care, they just want some sort of an interface so that they can interact with it, then 
the material design would do great because it will work on both the devices and it will look pretty good on both the devices. So the final question is the only one who can answer that is you because you will be talking to your client and if they need a very specific look and feel, uh, then you will have to check out the platform specific controls. And that's pretty much it. So I hope you have learned about a little bit about the platform specific controls. And there are a lot of different platform specific controls as you can see over here in the platform flutter platform widget. There are tons of controls that you can use. And uh, it really in the end depends on the type of app that you're working, the type of client that you have, and what are the requirements for a particular project. Hope you have liked it and thank you so much. Check out the YouTube description if you are interested in buying some of my Udemy courses. I'm actually working on a brand new Flutter Intermediate course, which hopefully will be available before Christmas, before 25th of uh, December. I'm working very hard on it, but uh, right now you can check out the YouTube description, check out my other courses on Udemy, and thank you so much.